Welcome to Branding Bites. My name is Kasha. I'm the Executive Creative Director here at Skidmore Studio. Hi, I'm Sean, the Design Director. We've got one topic for you guys today, and it's all about knowing your audience. Knowing your audience is so important, we can't just rush out there and talk to anyone and everyone, right? Well, you could, but it wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't really help, and, and people get confused by the messages. So, great story. We were just working with a, a park system who wanted to do a rebrand, and their thinking was, we need to attract all the people who don't come to the parks right now. I love this idea, yeah, except... It doesn't really work out, because as we discovered, 50% of people in a recent survey say they never once went outside last year on purpose for any recreational activity. Nope, just to and from their car after work. Isn't that terrifying? 50% of the people. Yeah, I, I, that speaks to why we have so many other problems, but beyond that, that says our audience for this park system are people who come to the parks. So what we want to do strategically is let them know more about the other parks that are in the system, the other amenities that are available to them, not spend five to ten times more trying to convert non-users. Absolutely, and we want to do that uh, visually by systematizing the parks, make uh -huh. it feel like it's part of a connected whole. Yeah. So when they're driving by the parks or they see something from another park, they understand that it's the same great amenities they get at their local park that they do go to. Mm -hmm. We just want to open up all the parks and all the system to all the people. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Great. And we've also been doing a lot of work with the Detroit food scene recently yeah, uh -huh. and got to know some of their audience. And I think one of the coolest takeaways from this whole uh, set of projects have been the fact that they really view each other as uh, friends, mm -hmm. not competitors. Mm -hmm. They know that they're not going to get you every night to come to their restaurant. So if they can get you one night and they can push you to their to their friends, they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. They share guest taps, they share ingredients, they share resources. It's a really, really neat scene. Yeah, and I love this because they, they know their audience. The Detroit food scene is all about inclusivity and supporting the scene, not about pushing off everybody else, but about saying this is what we stand for. But we uh, welcome and partner with others in what they stand for, right? A lot of camaraderie. And then um, a, a more like national kind of global example, GoPro and Red Bull, have you seen I this? I have seen this. So they're doing a lot of things together, which makes total sense from a product standpoint as well as from a marketing and communication standpoint. That's right. Uh, GoPro is now the... Um Sponsored camera. They're they're the ones taking the you know the camera, but all these crazy Red Bull mm -hmm, clips, which mm -hmm. is great because Red Bull is the fuel mm -hmm. for what they want to take pictures yeah. of. So you fuel yourself up, and you take a, a video of it, and then you post it, and all those collaborations just totally make sense. So if you're going to you know collaborate and work with others, know your audience, know who you're talking to, and when those audiences overlap. That's a win. And there's always some, have you seen the Geico commercials recently? <laughs> yeah. This was, I saw this the other day, I thought it was great. So great clip about uh, Goldilocks comes in, steals some yeah. furniture from the house, uh -huh. and uh, Geico is going to replace it with enough money so you can go to uh, Crate and Barrel. Crate and Barrel. So Which, like, it was odd, but I was like, it works. It works. It makes total sense. So if it works, when your audiences overlap, you know, know make sure you know your audience and do a, a strong collaboration. It was a lot of fun. All right, so now is the time on Branding Bites when we do Bitty Bites, and Bitty Bites are when we pull out of the magical envelope things that have been happening in the world of branding and marketing, and we give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down based on our opinions of this. <laughs> I love Every, the every week, every week. So, we can't do Branding Bites without Cheetos. Oh, you're always or, talking about Cheetos. All right, so what set this one up? So, there was a pop-up restaurant in New Manhattan. York. Yep. Yep, mm -hmm. and it featured Am Cheetos. Am Amber Burrell was the executive Burrell chef. was the executive chef, yeah. that's right. And I think it only lasted three days. Yeah, but the menu items created by Anne, covered in Cheetos and Cheetos meatballs, etc. This is great. This is totally on brand for them. And it just continues to reinforce what they're doing. Love the concept. Terrified of the food. <laughs> Move on. Uh, more food. We've got uh, Heinz doing their posts. Swipe oh, up yeah. on their posts. Ir uh, irresistible posts, I yep. think it was called. So if I see something, uh, some food porn that I like, I swipe up on it, and then Heinz delivers that to me. And of course, I'm going to repost that to everybody in my network. Love it. What a great way to bring like digital to meat space. Tender of food. I love it. <laughs> Tender of food. Uh, oh. Kingsford and Wilford. Wilf Wilfork. Wilfork. Yeah, so he, he just retired, pro football player. Kingsford uh, sponsored tweet about his retirement. I love this because it's a brand uh, getting into someone's you know uh, next phase of their life in a really interesting way because this guy is now going to pursue his passion for barbecue. Watching this 300-pound football player kick up his heels at the end of this spot made me the happiest I've been all day. Uh, <laughs> big thumbs up. I thought it was brilliant. Super great. Loved it. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, World Space talking about knowing their audience. Yeah. They so, know them by name and where they live. Yeah, so World Market uh, talked to their actual consumers and got their stories and then used and created a marketing campaign around those stories about how they decorated and created uh, small spaces inside of their homes. I love the personableness of this, and even if I'm not that person, I can relate to who that person is. I want to be a part of it. I love it. Says a lot of thumbs up this week.
Mostly. <laughs> That's true, mostly. All right, great. Well, this has been fun. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into Branding Bites with us. Um, if you have any questions, hit us up at Skidmore Studio on Twitter. And as always, you can look us up, skidmorestudio.com. All right, take care. See, See ya. ya.